Mic check, mic check. All right, we're live. Um, just the little technical difficulties getting started, but we're starting. We're ready. We're good to go. Um, all right, so we're picking up where we left off yesterday with Mass Effect 1. Gonna hop right into it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm um, excited to get back out there and play more of it. And it's just been... I've had nothing but Mass Effect Brain. I need to finish classic Mass Effect 3. Um, but I know I have time to finish that, so that's why I kind of like took a break. Because I felt like it was too much Mass Effect. <laughs> and I'm kind of just slogging through. Um, still hazier than Persona, but you know, it's uh, still. So let me. Uh, Take a look at something. I think we're good. I think we're good to go. To get started. Alright. Yeah, this is a pretty nice song. I like it. I'm using, um, which is a soundtrack app. A lot of people rolled it, and uh, I think they've been improving it. I've been satisfied with it so far. Um, as you can see, it down here. Um, but yeah. Uh, seems good to me. But we're finally out in space, um, so... Linted, what's up, my man? How you doing? Thanks for the subscription. <laughs> How's your Sunday been? Just getting started with some uh, Mass Effect here. Resume. That's the one we want. <laughs> Pretty good. Scared the crap out of myself and that white guy. <laughs> Alright, I need to know the lore. I need to know the lore what happened. <laughs> I just noticed the way this room is designed, like when I first <laughs> when I first signed in, it made it just it made the ship seem very long and voluminous and I was scared. I'm like, wait, what happened? But no, that's uh just that's the slope. Just um in the remastered version it just has that look now that you didn't have to worry about back in the two thousand seven version. Did a short stream earlier where I played a horror game, they got us with a jump scare at the end. <laughs> Uh, which horror game was it? That sounds hilarious. Alright, so we are officially out here in the galaxy. We're gonna want to make a beeline for Liara's dig site. There's actually, um story reasons as to why you want to do her quest her quest first so that's why we're gonna go and do it uh i 
think it's in Athens. Oh, it's nice to know they fixed the audio mix. Um, usually this part's super loud in comparison to the rest of the game. So it doesn't like deafen you. Here's the Fathom, Home Alone. It's free on Steam. It's also pretty short. <laughs> yeah, those indie horror games are pretty, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, there's um, another streamer I follow who plays a lot of those indie horror games. And you do find some, uh, some gems, that's for sure. That will terrify you and your friends. Alright, so we found our planet. This is where she's located. Um, but this is an Alliance planet, which is surprising. But there's not really much more explanation to it, other than the fact that, yeah, it's a human, it's a human planet. And there's Prophean tech on it. Which kind of makes sense because humans are just starting to colonize the galaxy. And had it belonged to any of the other alien races, the question would be, why are you just now finding the Prophean artifacts? So, that makes sense. Alright, so... If I remember correctly, it's gonna be a lot of Geth on this planet. I mean, Rex would be pretty useful regardless. Like he's useful in every uh, combat situation. I'm probably going to go with Garrus and Tali. So we got to up some strange readings, really strange, like off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. All right. That's where we need to go. So we're going to go and head over there. We've also got the reworked Mako. Let's see. Yeah, the bullets actually go where you're aiming this time. <laughs> and they also rework the sound of the cannon. Thrusters. More maneuverable. So yeah, it's just a better... It's a better makeup. That's what this is. It really touched it up and um, it no longer feels like... I'm driving a brick with wheels on it. This actually feels like a futuristic FAV. Or, um, APC. Because if it handles worse than, um, your modern day 21st century armored personnel carrier, something's wrong. We're in the uh, we're in the twenty second century. All right. Now we get to put this baby into work. Oh yeah. This feels so much better. So much better. But now I don't have an excuse. If I miss, it's because I'm trash, not because the Mako's uh, in desperate need of calibrations.
Okay, there should be a path. It's just the Mako feels so good that I feel like I can get away with these um, riskier frontal assaults. Which you would never think of doing in the original. I can only imagine just how hard this thing hits. Like, you look at the length of this cannon, and it's firing magnetically accelerated slugs at you, like, it's, you know... On route. I, I'd rather not think about just how uh, painful that is. Alright, we can, we can uh, helm it up. We can helm it up. Um, Alright, so I got 8 points. Spectre uh, training is extremely important and good but I normally will try to max it out I'm not going to do that this time around instead I'm going to focus on my encryption and um, all that good stuff because it allows me to hack since I am playing as an engineer um, I should have an easier time doing that but um, you know it takes some getting used to. So, like, I apologize. I apologize if you're like, oh, I expected better engineer gameplay. Like, yeah, I don't. Engineer is not my, uh, my favorite class. I chose engineer because it's the class that I play the least. So I thought it would be um, a challenge. But I've played engineer before. Like, I've played all the classes in the game. But um, my YouTube playthrough is my actual main. Let's see. Yeah, um... Infiltrator. That's like my, my main class, my favorite class. Hey! Dream Hunter, thank you for the sub. You and Linton. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Means a lot. Means a lot. <laughs> How's your Sunday been? I was just talking to Linton about uh, Fears to Fathom, a game he was playing uh, with a friend, and uh, it got him with a jump scare. Those indie horror games, you do have to be careful. Like, they're really well done. <laughs> I like watching people play them, not so much playing them myself, you know. I just get, I just get too scared. Which I do have to start thinking about um, Halloween or October, maybe maybe just the the month of October, because it's July now. So we got time. We got time to think about it. I was also thinking of playing Fear. I meant to do it last year, and then I just didn't. So who knows? New Year. New rules. All right. Actually, let me uh, check the equipment. So this is one feature that was removed from Mass Effect 2 and 3. A lot of people really, really lamented that, and I could see why, because this is pretty cool. Like um, being able to modify your weapons, equip different attachments, things like that. And it's even more relevant now that, you know, we have a good combat engine for once. <laughs> you know, it matters. It makes a it makes a difference. Sunday's been going alright. Almost done with another project for Zach. Time for lunch. Nice, nice. Yeah, I've I've pretty much decided that I'm gonna have pasta. For Leonard, really. Because I'm not going to eat again until lunch later. What are you having for lunch? That's the real question. <laughs> it's like, instead of big dinner, it's big lunch right now. Alright, so I get a little extra in damage protection, but um, 
I'm losing all attack biotic protection. Well, shields are about the same. So it's really, it's really like not worth PBH. All right, give her upgraded shoddy, upgraded pistol. All right. Garrus. All right, that's pretty pretty sweet armor. All right, but you know, on the other hand, you can see why they did remove it in the future games because. We just had um, a lot of a lot of micromanaging, but if you're a fan of RPGs, you're used to it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think like when I played the original, I wasn't like, oh, I'm <laughs> I'm spending too much time in the menu. You know what I mean? Like, I've played other games where it's a lot, it's a lot worse. This isn't this isn't the worst I've seen it. You know what? I'm not gonna equip that. I'm not I'm not gonna equip that. We're gonna just clear out the mods because I'd rather Tiza I'm gonna use assault rifle primarily, so we can give him that. And then combat sensor and then Tali. Eighteen percent minus eighteen percent cooldown reduction. I don't think it's really gonna work against these organic or inorganic enemies, but you know. Alright, so we've kitted up and now we're about to storm this building here. There's a geth in there. We should be able to mow them down though. Pretty easy. I'm gonna have my. Alright, there it is. So, the reason why I'm so cautious is because the enemies, in my opinion, do a lot more damage in the first game than in the future games. The future games are definitely easier to play. They're still challenging, don't get me wrong. Like, there's still times where you'll get wrecked if you're not smart, but they are, in generally, much easier to play than Mass Effect 1 was. Mass Effect 1 was actually punishing. And it wasn't so much that it was more tactical, it was just more janky and rough. And so you couldn't, you know, yellow. Like, if you made a mistake, you'd get killed in three shots. Or Until you built your class right, but you needed the skill points. And they also reward um, exploration. There's always a Geff, fellow. Yeah, exactly, Dream. Exactly. There's always a Geff, and they attack it at most inopportune times. And um, the aggro was pretty bad. Like in um, Classic Mass Effect 1, they would um, sprint towards you and just melee you to death. Because they could. Because the game was so janky. So, like, you literally had to kind of bait them out. If you didn't bait him out, you would just get wrecked. And I don't know, they still might do it in this game, but they've reworked the control, so it should be easier to deal with. 
We got them all, Shepard. All right. So we have now officially opened up all the gates. Let's go ahead and check the map. Yeah, so we're heading in the right direction. Hello, hello, see me this time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've got I've got my um I got the chat opened up on an entirely different overlay, so I won't miss you this time, Edgy. How you doing, my man? Just hanging out with uh, Dream and Linton. Enjoying a Mako that actually shoots straight this time. I mean, that's that's worth the price of admission right there. Like, like seriously, that's worth the price of admission right there. If you if you don't buy this game for any other reason, buy it because the Mako actually shoots straight. <laughs> like seriously, that's that's worth the price of admission. How's it going, Sir Edge? Doing good. Gonna get a haircut soon. We need to come by, stick around for a bit. <laughs> Sir Edge. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be your new uh, your new alias. <laughs> So, you know, we had um, Ant, Edgy Hedgy, Jar Jar Bitch, and now Sir. <laughs> Sir Edge. Which I think, I think Sir Edge uh, would be fitting. But yeah, I love, I love the photo mode in this game. It's, it's really, it's really great. The only thing I don't like is when you take a photo, like in game, um, your your photos get moved somewhere else and you have to like find them on the hard drive. I would have preferred to be safe like Steam, but whatever. Because you can get this game on other uh, platforms, so it makes sense why why that's the case. But. Sir Edge of Edgerton. Yes, yes. <laughs> Your new honorific. I like some dark digestus with a side of black tea and plain crumpets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're just we're gonna call that the the, uh, the edges and special. Yeah, I was not trying to like go off into the lava. You'll need a top hat and a monocle? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You gotta go all in. You gotta go all in. Brave to assume I don't already have one considering the fact I live in England. <laughs> True. True. Alternate costume one, yeah. That's Edge's alternate costume one. 
You want the alternate costume too, it's gonna be DLC. Unless you got the, the legendary edition. The alternate costume too would be like a a Sonic costume with a top hat and monocle or something like that. Oh shit, I gotta get my hair cut now. See ya. Hey man, thanks for stopping by. I know you're gonna be looking fresh when they're done. Sir Edgyton gonna get some edges. Like, I want to get edged up myself, but part of me knows that if I do that, I'm just going to lament the loss of my, my hairline. Like, it's starting to happen, and I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to be like, I remember when, you know, my hairline was two centimeters longer, and yeah, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Oh yeah, I was talking to a viewer, he wanted to do like a Halo campaign marathon. Not sure if you want to join in. Um, I think I'm a pass on that one. Only because I literally just beat the entire Halo campaign, like all of the Halos, um, offline, like off stream, and I've kind of Haloed out. Like I, I started playing again right after I played with you and uh, Steve, and I finished Halo 3 ODST, I finished Halo 4, I'd already played all the other ones, and I took a break. But I do appreciate the invite, though. But I think I'm gonna pass. Right on starting on Reach this Tuesday evening. Oh shit. Well, oh, I mean, Reach is the best one. Reach is the best one, for sure. Maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe I'll come around. I, I love Reach. Reach is amazing. I just wanted to try that. I just wanted to try that. Was a bad idea back then, still a bad idea now. Negative contact. Oh yeah, I saw a pic of us at Steve's old apartment if you're less certain on. Yeah, exactly. Back when back when my hairline was was in its prime, okay? It's not there anymore. It's starting to thin. The years of, of age and mountain dew is getting to me. Like, I'd like to say it's because I trained, I trained so hard that my uh, hairline just began to fade away, but that's just not true. Now, yeah, my squat regimen is, is pretty intense by my standards anyway, but it's still not enough. It's still not enough. Can't shoot. Another another bit of info is he wants to play on Legendary. On Legendary? Oh my god. I mean, honestly though, with three people, with three people, it may be uh, doable. Man, I've done it, I've done it on, you know, with two people. Myself and my brother. But it is a, it is a slob. It is a slob. But, I'm sure... I'm sure you guys know what you're doing. I definitely can't promise I'll stick around for the entirety of the campaign, but I'd like to try it anyway. Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why? Unless it's different. Maybe it's different. But if that's the case, I gotta look up the, the mappings. So they've changed it. 
That's how you healed in the old games. I'm trying to keep Garrus like up. Maybe Garrus has to go down, and then I can use Unity. Maybe. Don't worry, cleanly shaved is sexy. Yeah, it worked for uh, it worked for Saitama and Johnny Sin, so it worked for me. He has one of his friends joining, so you'd be a fourth. Oh, cool. These guys, they are a pain in the ass. Cover won't break. Actually, Switch to shotguns, we gotta get this guy off of us. Which class are you playing by the way? It looks like soldier. I'm playing an engineer. Um it looks similar only because they rework the uh, weapons requirements. So in the remastered version, all classes can use all weapons. In the original, like, you couldn't use certain weapons, which was stupid. This actually makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'm playing Engineer only because I wanted to give myself a challenge for this playthrough. Um, because in my opinion, Engineer is like the least, the least um, powerful class, I would say. Like, I don't want to use the term least OP because I don't think any of the classes are OP per se, but um, some of them are definitely like, you can steamroll pretty easy. Like, like Soldier, for example. Soldier in Mass Effect 1 is uh, insane. Like, if you get your build right, like, I remember my brother soloing a Thresher Maw on foot. Like, no other class could have done that shit. So yeah, it's just like, it's just things like that. Whereas engineer doesn't have you know super crazy skills, you know what I mean? Like engineer does a lot of debuffs. Oh I see I didn't know to change that. Yeah. Like Mass Effect 2 and Greenery Master version is pretty much uh, like the same, but um, 
Mass Effect 1 is where there's like real good. Fire in the hole. This isn't even the hardest battle, like, the, the Gef, um, Gef Colossus are pretty tough. And they're like, damage sponges. They take a while to take down. But, you know, patience. And a sniper rifle, and you'll take it down eventually. Oh yeah, I remember that there's infinite ammo in the first game, right? Yeah, that's correct. So in the first game, the guns um, use like the principle of overheating to check you. So you can't just fire, you know, indiscriminately forever. But, um, you know, they replaced that for like a more familiar ammo system in two and three, which I would have preferred. I would have preferred, um, there be an option choice like there's one gun in mass effect 3 that has the overheating principle um but every other gun requires thermal cl clips to be swapped out i mean even that one like if you overheat your weapon you still have to swap out the thermal clip so it's not like um you know full classic but i would have liked the choice because you know, it kind of made sense from just a weapon design perspective. And then they go to the thermal club system and it's like, well, yeah, now you can fire more rounds without having to, um, without having to, you know, reload or anything like that, or having to let your gun cool down. Because if you use a thermal club system, you can keep firing um, and not have to worry about overheating. But when you run out of thermal clips, you can't shoot at all. So it's like, I would have preferred to just have, you know, just one. But they took that away in subsequent ones? Yeah. They wanted to make the uh, newer games feel more like a third-person shooter. Something that people are more familiar with. Which, I can understand why they did it. But I personally... I personally don't. I don't like the fact that they took the choice away, is what I'll say. I think if we had more um, choice, like you can go with, um, you know, the classic weapon that, you know, reloads. <laughs> um, I mean, that overheats, or you can go with um, the new system where you just swap out thermal clips. I think that would have been better. Or you can, or you can give people like a hybrid option so they can have like spare thermal clips and then on that last thermal clip they can you know just sit on it and let the gun go out. because they've run out of thermal clips like for example in that situation i had to use burst fire one for accuracy but also because i didn't want my gun to overheat but if i were playing mass effect two or three I could just hose him down and then pop in a new thermal clip. So that would have been a nice change to the, uh, to the combat system to kind of give players more of a choice in how they want to approach each situation. Like there's there's a co uh, cost benefit to each approach that you take. So we're close. We're close to Liara. Um, 
I'm gonna save my game here and I will be right back. I gotta go to the bathroom. So, be right back and I guess we can just have like the ambient ambient music. Um I gotta fix that because I have music now. <laughs> I have music now, so like there's no need for me to, you know, quote unquote mute the game. But I'll be right back guys. I'll be right back. We'll fix that. back we are back <clears throat> all right rollers back in we're back in the cavern Cavern, Cavern, whatever, and we're gonna go down. Pretty close. There's one more mini boss fight in this section. But in my opinion, of the three missions that you can do, this is the easiest one. <laughs> Could somebody help me? Please? Can you hear me out there? I'm trapped. I need help. Are you okay? What happened to you? Listen, this thing I'm in is a Prothean security device. 
I cannot move, so I need you to get me out of it, all right? How did you end up in there? I was exploring the ruins when the Geth showed up, so I hid in here. Can you believe that? Geth, beyond the veil! I activated the tower's defenses. I knew the barrier curtains would keep them out. When I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to. I was trapped in here. You must get me out, please! Your mother is working with Saren. Whose side are you on? What? I am not on anybody's side. I may be Venezia's daughter, but I am nothing like her. I have not spoken to her in years. Please, just get me out of here. We just need to figure some way past this energy field. It's a Prothean barrier curtain. I knew it would keep me safe from the Geth. When I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to. I was trapped in here. You must get me out, please. We'll find some way to help you. There is a control in here that should deactivate this thing. You'll have to find some way past the barrier curtain. That's the tricky part. The defenses cannot be shut off from the outside. I don't know how you'll get in here. Be careful. There is a Krogan with the Geth. They have been trying different ways to get past the barrier. All right. So we need to activate the uh, mining laser and basically drill a hole under. Because you're not going to be able to, to get through that shield. I do not want to get hit by one of those rockets. Alright, chain reactions are always nice. I just hate that I'm, like, consistently poisoned. <laughs> like, when your health bar goes green, that's because you got hit by radioactive rounds. And they suck. Because they, like, nerf your, uh, killing effect. So this is a little puzzle. Um, basically, you have to remember the sequence to activate the laser. So you can take as many attempts as you want. It doesn't punish you. So A A X A X A X B Y A X B Y A. It's literally just trial and error. But we are coming up on the mini boss battle, so I'm gonna save. Because I could die. <laughs> Especially with this class, I could die. And again, the engineer is not by any means a bad class, it's just it it's it has a very particular strength against other tech using enemies like Geth. Like the engineer is super strong against Geth, but um, if you fight someone that's like biotic or uh, like organic soldier, you're gonna run into a bit oh, of trouble. How did you get in here? I didn't think there was any way past the barrier. 
We blasted through with the mining laser. Of course. Yes, that makes sense. Please, get me out of here before more Geth arrive. That button over there should shut down this containment field. There is an elevator back in the center of the tower. At least I, I think it's an elevator. It should take us out of here. Come on! I, I still cannot believe all this. Why would the Geth come after me? Do you think Benezia is involved? Seren's looking for the conduit. You're a Prothean expert. He probably wants you to help him find it. The conduit? But I don't know... What the hell was that? These ruins are not stable. That mining laser must have triggered a seismic event. We have to hurry. The whole place is caving in. Joker, get the Normandy airborne and lock in on my signal. On the double, mister! Aye, aye, Commander. Secure and away. ETA, eight minutes. He needs to move faster. In case you didn't notice, this place is falling apart. Exhilarating, isn't it? Thanks for getting rid of those energy fields for us. Hand the doctor over. Whatever it is you want, you are not getting it from me. We don't have time to deal with this idiot. Charge! <sighs> I like your attitude. about done. Still don't want to get sloppy done. Like stuff can still go wrong. Okay we did it. No deaths. And, uh, and, uh, Too pace. close, Commander. Ten more seconds, we would have been swimming in molten sulfur. The Normandy isn't equipped to land in exploding volcanoes. They tend to fry our sensors and melt our hull. Just for future reference. We almost died out there, and your pilot is making jokes? Joker pulled our asses out of there. I think he's earned the right to a few bad jokes. I see. It must be a human thing. 
I don't have a lot of experience dealing with your species, Commander. But I am grateful to you. You saved my life back there, and not just from the volcano. Those Geth would have killed me or dragged me off to Saren. What did Saren want with you? Do you know something about the conduit? Only that it was somehow connected to the Prothean extinction. That is my real area of expertise. I have spent the past 50 years trying to figure out what happened to them. Just how old are you exactly? I hate to admit it, but I am only 106. Damn! I hope I look that good when I'm your age. That's what a I'm saying. A century may seem like a long time to a short-lived species like yours, but among the Asari, I am barely considered more than a child. That is why my research has not received the attention it deserves. Because of my youth, other Asari scholars tend to dismiss my theories on what happened to the Protheans. I've got my own theory on why the Protheans disappeared. With all due respect, Commander, I have heard every theory out there. The problem is finding evidence to support them. The Protheans left remarkably little behind. It is almost as if someone did not want the mystery solved. It is like someone came along after the Protheans were gone and cleansed the galaxy of clues. But here is the incredible part. According to my findings, the Protheans were not the first galactic civilization to mysteriously vanish. This cycle began long before them. Where'd you come up with this theory? I thought there wasn't any evidence. I have been working on this for 50 years. I have tracked down every scrap and shred of evidence. Eventually, subtle patterns start to emerge. Patterns that hint at the truth. It is difficult to explain to someone else. I cannot point to one specific thing to prove my case. It is more a feeling derived from a half century of dedicated research. But I know I'm right. And eventually, I will be able to prove it. There were other civilizations before the Protheans. This cycle has repeated itself many times over. If the Protheans weren't the first, then who was? I don't know. There is barely any evidence on the Protheans, even less on those who came before them. I cannot prove my theory, but I know I am right. The galaxy is built on a cycle of extinction. Each time a great civilization rises up, it is suddenly and violently cast down. Only ruins survive. The Protheans rose up from a single world until their empire spanned the entire galaxy. Yet even they climbed to the top on the remains of those who came before. Their greatest achievements, the mass relays and the citadel, are based on the technology of those who came before them. And then, like all the other forgotten civilizations throughout galactic history, the Protheans disappeared. I have dedicated my life to figuring out why. They were wiped out by a race of sentient machines. The Reapers. The... the Reapers? But I have never heard of... How do you know this? What evidence do you have? There was a damaged Prothean beacon on Eden Prime. It burned a vision into my brain. I'm still trying to sort out what it all means. Visions? Yes, that makes sense. The beacons were designed to transmit information directly into the mind of the user. Finding one that still works is extremely rare. No wonder the Geth attacked Eden Prime. The chance to acquire a working beacon, even a badly damaged one, is worth almost any risk. But the beacons were only programmed to interact with Prothean physiology. Whatever information you received would have been confused, unclear. I am amazed you were able to make sense of it at all. A lesser mind would have been utterly destroyed by the process. You must be remarkably strong-willed, Commander. This isn't helping us find Saren, or the Conduit. Of course, you're right. I am sorry, my scientific curiosity got the better of me. Unfortunately, I do not have any information that could help you find the Conduit, or Saren. I don't know why Saren wanted you out of the picture, but I think we'll be a lot better off if we bring you along. Thank you, Commander. Saren might come after me again. I cannot think of anywhere safer than here on your ship. And my knowledge of the Protheans might be useful later on. And her biotics will come in handy when the fighting starts. Good to have you on the team, Liara. Thank you, Commander. I am very grateful. Oh, I am afraid I am feeling a bit lightheaded. When was the last time you ate? Or slept? Dr. Chakwa should take a look at you. It is probably just mental exhaustion. Coupled with the shock of discovering the Protheans' true fate. I need some time to process all this. Still, it could not hurt to be examined by a medical professional. It will give me the chance to think things over. Are we finished here, Commander? 
We can talk again after you've seen the doctor. The rest of you, dismissed. Mission reports are filed, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. We've received your report, Commander. I understand Dr. Tassoni is on the Normandy. I assume you're taking the necessary security precautions. Liara's on our side. The Geth were trying to kill her. Benezia would never allow Saren to kill her daughter. Maybe she doesn't know. Or maybe we don't know her. We never expected she could become a traitor. At least the mission was a success. Apart from the utter destruction of a major Prothean ruin. Was that really necessary, Shepard? The Geth were crawling all over those ruins. We were lucky to make it out alive. Of course, Commander. The mission must always take priority. Good luck, Commander. Remember, we are all counting on you. Alright, so that meeting didn't go too bad. <laughs> Like, you, you can choose to be completely antagonistic with the Council, and I mean, you'd be justified Like the Council was um, just a pain in the ass, for lack of a better term, but, you know. Try to, uh, trying to see things from their perspective, it makes sense. So, now we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna chat with our uh, squad mates a bit. There are, um, there's two that actually will give you quests, right? There's uh, there's two quests that we can get from talking to our squad mates. Rex has a quest and Garrus has a quest. So um, you are gonna wanna talk to them to get the quest. It may be too early in the game to unlock them, but you know. Shepard, what can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Oh, you forgot to change your screen back to the game. Oh, shit. Everyone. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Yeah, I literally did do that. Yeah, I did forget. So, like, I'm gonna have to cut, like, the, the last, um, I don't know, five minutes. Five, ten minutes of dialogue. It was pretty much all dialogue, but, you know, acting is part of the experience. So thank you for letting me know. Um, bad habit. Bad habit. Alright, at least everything else looks normal. Alright. So long, Rex. Shepard. I actually didn't mean to do that. Shepard. What can you tell me about the gen- All I know, every Krogan is infected. Every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Are your people really dying? 
We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. So long, Rex. Shepard. So we can't get the quest just yet. Um, but the deal with the Krogan is actually pretty tragic. Um, so for those of you who don't have the time, dive into the lore. Basically, there was an invasion of this alien species, which we're going to be introduced to shortly. And um, none of the council races were able to fight the enemy because the enemy bred too quickly. So they needed someone that was hardy enough to fight this, uh, this enemy. And so in the Krogan, who were at the time still in like their their tribal period. Um, I guess you could probably say they were at the industrial level in their civilization, um, but they were still separating clans and whatnot. So, enter the Solarians, they come in, they say, hey guys, we need you to fight this enemy. Um, we'll give you, you know, technology, weapons, all of that. Um, and so, yeah, they're like, cool, we'll take it. And um, they fought the enemy, beat the enemy back, and then they were like, oh, we're pretty strong. Maybe we can start, you know, taking over more and more planets. In fact, we kind of need to since we breed so quickly. So they started invading other planets, um, and the council said, hey guys, stop that. And Krogan's like, F you, we're gonna, we need these planets, like our population is growing too fast. And then the Krogan rebellions uh, begin. And because the Krogans were hardier than all the other races combined, um, they had to come up with a solution to neutralize the threat. So the Solarians could have engineered a, uh, basically a genetic plague to kill them all. Um, the Terrians could have bombarded them into the dust. But the Solarians said, no, we don't want to exterminate. We don't. We don't want to uh, commit genocide here. We don't want to exterminate an entire race of, of people. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to introduce a sterility plague, which will slow their numbers down greatly, stop them from expanding, which was the cause of the rebellions in the first place, and um, force them to surrender because they can't replenish their numbers fast enough. Which is exactly what happened. <laughs> Krogan's be like, make us stop, and they did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They fucked around and found out, right? So that that's what the Solarians did. They basically nerfed and put a hard nerf on the Krogans. Um, took one of their race traits away, which is rapid uh, growth. And um, the Krogans were forced to slow down. So the Krogans kind of like a lot of the races, uh, races in this game, the alien races, they are built on um, culture. Right? They're built on um, human cultures and human history because that's the only thing we have to go off of, right? So um, when you're writing these species, you're pulling from what you know. You're pulling from human history. And Rex would be the example, or the Krogan would be the example of, you know, a people who are isolated, you know, isolated from technology, isolated from the developing world, and then kind of thrust into it. So they didn't have the opportunity to work through their aggression. They didn't have an opportunity to work through their issues. They were just given really powerful weapons. Um, and so when we go to Tuchanka in the second game, you're gonna see the legacy of that, of being um, bumped up before you're, you're ready, so to speak. Like, you can make that argument about humanity today. I mean, we haven't destroyed ourselves yet, but we, have the ability to and we're kind of doing that anyway which is how we're treating the environment you know we have nuclear weapons that could destroy human civilization a thousand times over again um and you will always find support for war you'll always find support for killing other people but if you want to like help people it's a lot harder to get support for that so 
I kind of see a lot of humanity in the Rogan, um, honestly. But that's just my take. And back, my barber was closed because one of the staff got COVID. Good thing I barely cut my hair because I could have been there when I had COVID. I had to cut my hair by myself. But yeah, you dodged a bullet, dude. You dodged a bullet. Um, get the vaccine if you can. Self haircuts are great. I've been doing it for the past 23 years. Yep, I saved so much money cutting my own hair. Like, you know, it's 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 huge. It's huge. Commander, nice work out there. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSAC. Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. Being a Spectre does have its advantages. Exactly my point. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. As long as you do your job well, you're free to go about your business as you see fit. Thank you, Commander. So, Garrus is a really interesting character. Um, most fans of Mass Effect um, put, like, Garrus at the top of their list. I mean, he's at the top of my list. Um, my favorite character is uh, Morden, which you will meet him in Mass Effect 2. Um, but Garrus is, like, my second favorite character. Um, Garrus is awesome. And the interesting thing with him is, he, you know, he's a Tyrion. Tyrians are a militaristic society, very hierarchical. Um, their government is called the Turian Hierarchy, <laughs> so it's like in the name. Um, and they are very motivated by protocol and rules and structure and order. So they're the complete opposite of the Krogan, right? So the Krogan um, are all about, you know, um, honor and fighting and martial prowess. And the, the Turians like value those things too, but they value it through order and protocol and rules. Like there's a process to everything, um, which is why they're like the security of the galaxy, right? You'll find them in CSEC, um, you know, council security, etc. because all military service is compulsory. They're similar to like South Korea or Israel. Um, like everyone, everyone serves and um, yeah, he is a bad Turian, basically. So that's like what makes him interesting. He's uh, He doesn't care for rules. He doesn't care for protocol. I have no idea why my keyboard is like manipulating the volume by itself. Okay, stop that. <laughs> stop that. Um, but anyway, so as I was saying, um, he's a bad, he's a bad Turian. He, he wants to do the right thing and he wants to help people and he he from his own background sees a lot of like scummy people getting away with it because of those processes right so you can like look at the american criminal justice system and see how dudes like bill cosby or uh or jeffrey epstein have been getting away with it for a long time and then you look at some dude who steals a t-shirt and he gets like 20 years right so like that's kind of where garris is coming from he's like you know what i'm kind of sick of the the regular by the book law enforcement shit and i just want to help people my way so he's a good dude um if you're someone who's like anal retentive you will probably say oh i disagree with garris but um i'm not that way i see exactly where he's coming from i do all right, so this is our wreck hey, officer. Commander. Looking for some extra supplies before you head out? What have you got? Whatever you want. 
Armor, weapons, mods. It's not standard Alliance issue, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. He sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. Garrus is a Garrus is a fucking badass. So, um, in Mass Effect, you have the Paragon and Renegade um, halves that you can take for your character, and all of the characters in this game kind of fit along one or the other. You know, you have your Paragon characters, which are the more honorable kind of by the book heroic characters, and then you have your more Renegade characters who. Can be villainous or they can be good guys but they're more like a chaotic good right so your shepherd can be chaotic good if you want them to be i personally shy away from like doing hardcore uh, renegade playthroughs because a lot of it is just being a dick for no reason but um you know i do try to have fun with it so there'll be certain times where i'll choose like the renegade option because it just feels it's the most appropriate to do in that situation but um yeah garris represents the renegade like he's the pinnacle um renegade hero right and um his background makes that interesting it's not like he was a criminal or something and he decided to like you know do good no like he was a cop like his dad's a cop you know what i mean like he's a he's a by the book kind of dude that just got frustrated with the system so yeah he's a really great character the character seems so fleshed out which is nice yes um if there's one thing that bioware knows how to do is make make all of their characters really interesting why should i pay you for my weapons and armor my stuff doesn't come from the alliance i have to purchase it myself and it's not cheap hell the licenses alone have set me back more than i'd like but no licenses no goods Without the goods, I'm out of a job. Let's see what you got. You bet, Commander. So I don't need to ask him about licenses because I've already been buying licenses. Um, but yeah, basically, he can get you stuff that you don't have to, um, like port to get. So that's why it's a good idea to you know buy those licenses because you can just get gear and kit that you need on the go. And every time you dock somewhere, like you dock at a major hub, he will rotate out his stock and get new stuff. So, you know, it's a good investment. But like you, like you see here, um, he's got some grade seven weapons here. Spectre grade seven, um, three hundred and four thousand credits, which is a lot of credits. But if you sell all of the crap that you don't need, you can get there. You can get there in time. But the low level stuff I wouldn't sell. I would just convert it to Omni Jail because Omni Jail is super useful. Um, so let's go down here. So this is the engine room. This pretty much looks identical to the way it did in the first game. Like the only thing that's been updated are like the textures, which is like the case with most of the Normandy. But um, yeah, little baby, little baby drive core there because it's a smaller ship. Oh yeah, the Euro Finals is today. Yes, um, all of the, the football fans have been livid, um, just looking at you know what could potentially happen and how uh, things could pan out. It's exciting. It's exciting. Um, it's Italy and who else? Like who, who are the, the two teams? All right. Um, as far as Tali's concerned, Tali's a really interesting character too, um, and for more reasons than one like you know she's actually um like an elite she's from the the upper class of Corian society but everyone's got to go on a pilgrimage it doesn't matter what your status is you can't you can't say oh i have bone spurs and that's why i can't go on my pilgrimage like no you, you have to go on your pilgrimage um and uh yeah she's um she's trying to prove herself so similar to garris um, similar to Garrus, she is trying to, you know, make her mark on the galaxy in a positive way and help her people at the same time. Um, and there's going to be a lot more with her uh, in the future games. Like, she's a very important character. As I said, I don't like the vibe England gives off. Yeah. <laughs> Still pissed that Spain losses 1-0 to England right now. I want Italy to win. Gotcha. Gotcha. 
Yeah, England, England's, you know, the, the bruvs, the bruvs, as uh, we American Americans call them. They're not the, they're not graceful winners. They're not graceful losers. You know, like grace is just not in their vocabulary. They're kind of infamous. <laughs> Like you want to talk about super fan awards? They, they don't win. They don't win the super fan awards. Um, and then of course you have your your human crewmates. Um, so Caden, Caden is probably everyone's least favorite character um, because he is that by the book, you know, yes sir, no sir type of dude. Um, and I mean that's how he got in special forces, and that's why he does so well in special forces. But um, even like compared to you know Ash, like he doesn't have a lot of um, a lot of outward depth to him. He seems like kind of a flat character. But if you you know kick it with him, you'll learn more about him. Um, like he's definitely a likable character. It's just compared to the other characters in the canon. You know, it, it, he's uh, he's at the bottom. He's at the bottom of most people's list. Not his fault, though. You know, it's just the, the type of character that he is. Bioware couldn't just fill the Normandy with a bunch of, you know, wild, fire-from-the-hip cowboy types. You know what I mean? Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Did Italy just score? Anyways, nothing can really break my root, my mood right now except for a worldwide lockdown or something crazy like that. I'm getting a PS5 a bit late, but it's so hard to get. True, true. Still can't wait to play on something that doesn't sound like an airplane. <laughs> true. I guess the only way around that is to go with a Nintendo Switch uh, light. Um, I was talking to a buddy who just bought one, and um, he likes it. He says the battery life's pretty good, and um, you know, it's fun. So. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. Want to play some fun multiplayer games with my friends when instead I had to smash them? <laughs> oh, gotcha base. Anyways, Italy's score, let's fucking go. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Ren, what do you think? I have multiple friends. <laughs> true, true. You, you're uh, you're Sir Edgton. Um, the rules require that you only have like one friend. 
Aside being a Sigma male, you have to be a lone wolf. Even if all the girls and the jocks want to talk to you, you have to be alone. It's the rules. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term. Not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved. But it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. You Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapien species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered spaceflight and left our homeworld. Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pureblood. Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face, it is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Maybe she wanted to meet you but couldn't. I guess something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Yeah, so um, ending these conversations um, is like a meme in the Mass Effect community um, because there's there's like no transition. It's kind of just raw. It's like I should go. <laughs> and so if someone were to say that to you, IRL, you you would think, oh, did I like say something wrong? Did I offend them? Like, right? no, it's just Shepard being Shepard. It's funny because when people meet me, they expect me to be an edgy bitch. Maybe I am. I don't know because of my username. And then they get confused when I'm like, ooh, woo, hug, fun. <laughs> true, true. Exactly, exactly. Like, people assume that I'm a girl because I, I use um, Amethyst as a moniker. But it's, it's cool. It's cool. I'm not mad. I knew that going in. So yeah, we have Joker here. Joker is the darling child of the Mass Effect canon. Everyone loves Joker. If you don't love Joker, then something's wrong with you. Like, how can you not love this guy? This guy is hilarious, and um, he's the best pilot in the Alliance. Um, and the reason why is because he has a disability, brittle bone disease. Um, so for him... Um, he didn't want to be the person that everyone kind of pitied so he worked his ass off and beat everyone's ass and now he's like the apex pilot which is why he got this position to fly normandy um so yeah he's a great character really well written um and uh 
he's actually uh, an inspirational character as well because you know he overcame his limitations and um, he's kicking ass, man. He's kicking ass. So, Joker. And um, I'll probably chat him up later. But like you can, you can definitely do a lot of talking. This is more like a, a streamlined playthrough because I am streaming it. Some of you may actually go on to play this game, so I don't need to like spoil all of the dialogue. But Liara, I'm going to go through because I'm choosing her as a romantic option. Haven't decided um, what I'm going to do with the human crewmates yet, and I say that because if you don't already know, there's a choice that you're going to have to make. So yeah, we do have like some surveying that we can do that's going to give us some credits, some extra credits. I've also got to get everyone's kit together, but I'll do that off stream. So that can be tedious. Alright, so zoom out. So next mission is Pharos. I usually like to go Pharos, Novaria, um, and then just knock out those three. What the heck is this? This might be some of the DLC Message coming that we were talking in. about. Patching it through. Commander Shepard, my name is Nasana Dantius. I have a job for you. I can't say anymore in an unsecured communication. If you're interested in hearing my offer, meet me on the Citadel so we can talk in person. I'll be waiting in the Diplomat's Lounge on the Presidium. Alright, so now we have that quest unlocked so we can go. Oh, alright. So that's what we're doing. We're basically trying to stop an entire population center from getting wiped the fuck out. So let's go with bring Ash out here, Liara, and since I'm engineer, and like if you look here at the bottom of the screen, down here, it will tell you what your squad strength is. So you know, we're balanced because I'm tech. Liar is biotic, Ash is combat. So add up soldier and engineer. Status. Sensors reveal three fusion torches propelling asteroid X-57. At its current rate of acceleration, the asteroid will collide with Terra Nova in approximately four hours. Analysis. Torches must be disabled to cease the acceleration. Hello. I heard your transmission. Can you hear me? They haven't found me yet, but I can't talk long. Shut down the fusion torches. I'm going to die. God, I hope you're hearing this. Sexy motherfuckers here. What's up, TSM? How you been, bro? It's been a little minute. You been alright? The man, the myth, the legend is in the house. Oh yeah, I'm playing so much PS2 right now. I'm gonna finish Sonic Heroes, GTA, SA, Need for Speed Underground. It's so sick reliving my childhood. Yeah, man, all of those games are classics. Literally, all of those games are classics. Headed in the right direction. I don't know who you are, but I'm dipping. Oh. I may do. Uh, a retro stream myself one of these days. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we don't want to take a lot of fire from those, uh, those rockets. I got a bus today, but I'm fine. 
Oh, okay, man. That's good to hear you doing well. Maybe a bit too late on that because I wanted like cast explosion. That's cool. I think this is I think this is decent. It's decent. And then I can compare I can compare the photos later. But yeah, Miko's pretty hardy. Like I'm taking direct hits from rockets. But I can't keep taking those hits. Because you know, rockets are rockets. All right. All right, before we go in, let's go ahead and check everyone's kit because I haven't had the option to go through everyone's uh, inventory and give them the updated stuff that I've gotten. Because you do have to do that. That's one thing about the newer games. You don't have to worry about um, Upgrading because everyone kind of picks their own weapons and they just run with it. But I personally like this. Just the ability to have more control over, um, you know, what my squad mates are able to do and what they're using. Your boy been true a lot of the past couple of days, bad things. I don't know, man. I'm sorry to hear that, too. I'm sorry to hear that, too. You know. It's rough. Like, I'm literally just dealing with uh, first world problems. Like, my PC was going haywire, and I spent, like, the last four days trying to fix it, and I just got it fixed. And it's working. But it was a pain. Yeah, I was trying to get it to work. A lot of stress. Because I thought, like, maybe one of my hard drives may have been damaged, but luckily it wasn't. It just had some bad sectors on it. But I lost all my memes, though. Like, uh, I had this folder where I just put just the, the dankest memes, and I lost it lost in the, uh, in the malfunction so but that's like trivial compared to the things that you're dealing with so I hope that I hope that things work out you know what I can say from experience is that things will given enough time even if it sucks for a while And I'm over here like, girl, I had to cut my own hair in this day and age. Yeah, exactly. First world problems, man. No, the meme stash. Yeah, man. That hurt. That hurt. I would have I would have rather have lost game saves than the meme stash. I had been putting that meme stash together for like months, a couple of months. I've been just picking like the best memes and they're, they're gone, man. They're gone. Like I, I looked at my uh, my quick access in Windows, and I saw all my other folders except that one. I'm like, where the fuck is my meme? Where, where's my meme stash? And I tried to find it, and Windows was like, cannot find folder. I'm like, oh my god, what? What? It's gone. So yeah, that that was like a blow. That was a blow to the stomach, man. That hurt. That hurt. Something definitely happened here because we see we see dead people. Oh, Batarians. Batarians. Barak! Check! Check! Alright. 
I forgot to level us up. Varen are bad news. Um, when they get up close to you, they have a very powerful, very powerful bite. Very powerful bite, indeed. So yeah, we're gonna need that. Give me some hacking up in here. Advanced Unity. All right, so, Ash. Where is fitness, yeah. Fitness is really good for soldiers because they get um, immunity. The immunity is OD. It's a really, really great skill for all the soldier types. All right, Singularity, yep. Singularity is in my opinion, the best skill in the game. <laughs> so just, just freaking throw all the points in there. Um, and then barrier, because biotics need that for their uh, tankiness. You're not gonna find like a super tanky biotic ever, but it, it helps. All right. So, Liara, drop Singularity. Yeah, they're dead. Alright, cool. Release the Varen! I <laughs> released the Varen. Alright, let me open the door so we can get back to kicking ass. Aight, aight. And then, go ahead, warp. Not that it really matters because it's not going to go a new asshole. Alright. Put on the door, get in cover. So, a little thing about the Batarians. The Batarians are an alien race that are active in the Terminus systems. And they are hostile to all council races. There are slavers, um, criminals, fascists. They're just a generally unpleasant um, alien species. So usually whenever Batarians are involved, you know shit's about to go down. hate humans with a passion because um, the area that humanity started to um, colonize um, the Attican Traverse is like adjacent to the Batarian system so the Batarians already are like hostile and then they saw humanity moving in and they're like okay fuck you guys like you know we're just gonna it's on site like we see a human we're shooting them no questions asked so yeah bad blood but they have a really powerful military, and so we're kind of like on Cold War footing with the Batarians. We don't want a war with the Batarians. But you know, you have a fact up day, and you just put three bad things in one on stuff. More credit. Yeah, man, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. It's definitely uh, not easy to deal with. On me. Especially when people in your circle are like adding to your stress. Yeah, like that's even more difficult to deal with. Can you hear me? 
Who are you? What's going on? My name's Kate Bowman. I'm an engineer. I was part of the team assigned to bring this asteroid to Terra Nova. We were attacked yesterday by Batarian extremists. I've been hiding since they arrived. I think they know the torch went out. Why are they doing this? I don't know. But if this asteroid isn't slowed, millions of people on Terra Nova are going to die. If I find out anything, I'll... I've got to go. Good luck. And, you know, that's why it's always a good thing to try to do those, because you get EXP every time you successfully open the case up, so it works out. But yeah, just from that alone, you just see, like, the utility in both the Adept and the um, Soldier classes, because Liara and Ashley are those classes, like Peak, Biotics and Peak, uh, Soldier. Hey. Oh God, I didn't mean to. Are you hurt? <laughs> Takes more than one shot to bring me down. Sorry, I didn't even realize you were human until, well, I guess I'm not much of a soldier. I know you're scared, but I'm here to help. Commander Shepard with the Alliance. Simon, Simon Adwell. I'm the chief engineer on this rock. Listen, we don't have much time. The Batarians fired up the fusion torches. You've got to shut them down before we hit Terra Nova. There are four million people down there, Shepard. I... My family. They live in Aronis. My kids and grandkids. Nice community. It's good schools. I don't have time to do the math in my head. What happens if we don't stop this rock? X-57 is 22 kilometers long, twice the size of the asteroid that wiped out the Earth's dinosaurs. It would be like millions of fusion bombs striking at once. Millions. The heat of the blast. A thousand kilometers away, clothes will ignite. There'll be global wildfires. Air shock will flatten everything for hundreds of kilometers. Terra Nova will die, Shepard. Not just our colony. The planet. There'll be a climate shift, mass extinctions. The ecosystem won't recover for thousands of years. Millions, maybe. Is there any chance it'll land in the oceans? That would be even worse. Tsunamis would sweep inland at hundreds of kilometers per hour. Millions of tons of water would be vaporized at the point of impact. Global cloud coverage. The plants could all die, and if they go, the whole ecosystem rolls over. I'd have to run the numbers, but take my word for it. It'd be bad. I guess Batarians are as bad as they say. I've heard all the stories. Slave rings ranching people like animals. Pirate bands burning colonies to the ground. But this is... The Citadel Conventions forbid asteroid drops. I never thought the Batarians would go this far. Any idea who's behind this? Who's leading them? That might provide a clue. I heard a couple of them talking. They mentioned a Balak. It sounded like he's the one in charge. They didn't seem convinced this was a good idea, but they were scared of the guy. Scared enough to do what he wanted. You were on the ground when this happened. How many Batarians have you seen? And where? They landed at the main facility. It's locked down now. They've changed the passcodes. No idea what's going on inside. I did see groups head out to each of the torch stations. Couldn't say how many, though. Enough to give you a fight. <laughs> Those facial animations are goaded. Most Batarians aren't genocidal madmen, but these are terrorists. Yeah, I know. It's just, this isn't how I expected the world to be when I rolled out of bed this morning. Batarians everywhere, and I need to shut down all three torches. Anything else I should know? One of the torches is surrounded by live blasting caps. We were set up to excavate when we arrived at Terra Nova. I rigged them with proximity detectors. That tank of yours will set them off, so you'll have to go in on foot. Even then, they'll explode if you get too close. Just go slow and easy. You should be fine. Time's running short. One last thing. I had a crew working off-site when the attack hit. I'm worried about them. These Batarians are ruthless. I saw them smash the faceplates of guys working vacuum. And those Varen, I don't think they always wait for a corpse before feeding. Any idea where I can find them? They were running checks on our perimeter equipment. Easiest thing would be to tap into the transmission tower out on the surface. The equipment stations will show up on your sensors. 
I'll look for them, but the torches have to be my priority. Yeah, you're right. Saving Terra Nova is more important than my team. There were a bunch of engineers over at the main facility, but they're probably all dead. That or being held hostage by the Batarians. A woman named Kate Bowman contacted me. The Batarians haven't found her yet. Katie's alive. She's one of my best engineers. She signed on with her brother, Aaron, I, I think his name is. He's part of the security detail. I hope they're okay. You better find a good place to hide. If the Batarians come back and find you... Yeah. I think I'll make myself scarce. Good luck, Shepard. Alright, so now we got an overview of what the heck's going on. They're trying to go for that 4 million to 0 KD ratio. <laughs> Easy ratio, yeah, exactly. Alright, let me check the map here. Alright. That's a transmission tower. That's uh, torch number one. We can actually get there. Pretty ground. Don't have to. <clears throat> Climb any mountains. Yeah, um, the exploration was another thing that was cut from the second and, and third game, which, you know, I think in 2007 I didn't really much care for it, but now that you have more powerful systems, I think the exploration should be a part of any new Mass Effects going forward. Like we have Mass Effect um, 4 in the works right now. All kinds of interference. Sorry, there's a lot of feedback. Let's see if I can fix it. In the meantime, just keep doing. I did it all the time in COD, yeah. <laughs> Damn, that sucks. Is the fourth game any good? Oh, and it works still. Yeah, the fourth game still in the works. Uh, Mass Effect uh, Andromeda is technically the fourth game, um, but it's not. It's not really canon. Like it, it, it is, but it isn't. Um, Mass Effect Andromeda basically takes place like 600 years after the events of Mass Effect Three, and you have no idea if. Um, like, you know, what happened in Mass Effect 3 worked for the benefit of everyone involved or not. So, it's just kind of like a backdrop. You don't really uh, pay attention to it. But um, there's a legit Mass Effect 4 that's in the works. Alright, so they got these things combined the fuck up. have to use technology to not die. All 
right, this extra time still hope Italy win. Gotta give love to my mafia homies. Yeah, no worries, man, no worries. Appreciate you stopping by as always. You gotta land Italy your energy. I want I want Italy to win um, only because I'm throwing my support behind the Italian waifu lobby. <clears throat> should take off oh nah bro I'm not leaving oh okay I thought you were heading out <laughs> bullshit uh. alright I was saying this like him damage and shit I'm gonna run across the room here. Alright, yeah, stay on me. Well, it looks like they're all up there. Which is, which is cool. Alright, switch to a shoddy. Kinda just have it in the background. Have my priorities, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Family values. That's a motherfucking rocket drone. That's sanity. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and get you sabotage. Ow. Powering up. Alright, she's juicing up. The, what the? Alright, you know what? I will, I will take it. As long as those things don't start firing. Rocket drones, as you can imagine, can do a fuck ton of damage. Downstairs. Speaking of Mafia, I watched Batman reruns. I'm doing the Batman Anthology Marathon. Why the fuck is Penguin not a cool Mafia boss guy? He's nothing like the comic book version. He's just a dumb outcast guy. I mean, it is Tim Burton. He does love outcasts, bro. True, true. And I think that's what makes him such a, uh, an interesting character, right? Because he's like the opposite of what you'd expect to be a mob boss. Like, Penguin has like he's kind of comical. You've got to hurry. You really pissed them off. Their leaders setting charges everywhere. I think he's going to blow this whole facility. Get away from there. Don't shoot, please. No. Shutting down the torches. I won't ask you again. Find this problem and deal with it. Get her out of here.
Hey, don't worry, man. We're gonna find you. You won't have to look for us for long. We're gonna find you. I love me some wet work. Some medium armor. An ash equipped medium armor. Yes, you can, but I don't have anything useful. Ah! Why don't we? You know what? You know what? I'm just gonna mark that as junk. I'm gonna mark it as junk. Get rid of it. Get rid of that too. Because there is a cap. Like, you can only carry so many items, and none of this is really valuable, financially speaking. So. Just gonna do what I should have done already. Give her an upgraded pistol. Then all of this uh, great one stuff you can get rid of. Damn, my man looking like a scroll from Captain Marvel. True. <laughs> True. Big true. It's like, like, no wonder, you know what I mean? Like, no wonder he's trying to, like, blow up the world. Alright, give me that Omni Gel. Alright, so now that we've done that, I need to actually use my freaking armor upgrade. Like, I bought it and I haven't equipped it. Like a idiot. Alright. So we're gonna go ahead, do that, boom, boom. Okay. You need to put plenty of bite in your pistol. Combat sensor. Then ash. Rad rounds. Recoil dampener. I will put basics, basics, and high caliber barrel three. That should give us a nice bonus. Then AP rounds. Sight. Give her chemical rounds three and a combat sensor. Yara chemical rounds three, and that's about it. And then we can go ahead and on the jail those two. Save game. Alright. Quick bathroom break and then I'm gonna push through to the fan. Alright, broski. Yeah, I'll be right back. Um, let me put on, you see something here, um, all right, we'll go music zero, we'll put on some quick tunes for you guys, and, uh, yeah, BRB.
We're back. We're back. We're back. Um, okay, cool. So that again was from the Twitch soundtrack mix. Um, all DMCA free music. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Um, all right. Looks like all systems are go. Screen is where it's supposed to be. And let's go save four million lives. Yeah, this is a pretty, uh, pretty mean team. Pretty mean team. Uh, all right, better. <laughs> I didn't even think we uh, went that far, but when you try not to get blown up by mines, you know, that long trip doesn't seem very long at all. Because you're literally in a moment. Oh, I didn't notice you were back. <laughs> yeah, no worries, bro. No worries. It's all good. It's all good. I literally just came back, so. Alright. I want to flag this objective. Like, I know we just knocked two torches off already, there's three, so it should be the last one, but, you know. Who, who freaking knows, man? Who freaking knows? Your voice blended in with the music? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, um... I haven't adjusted the audio mix yet, um, for, like, the music. It's like, I have the desktop audio kind of gated, so my voice doesn't get drowned out, but, you know, when you're, uh, when you're working with that fresh soundtrack mix, you know, music, music, uh, takes over, takes over. Yeah, that's a, a really weird phenomenon. That's, that's weird. That's weird as fuck. Why are these asteroids floating around like this? Did someone break gravity? Who knows? We're gonna find out. Are there mines? Automated voices are telling us they are. But there are gun turrets, so it probably isn't. Uh, those mofos hit hard. Alright, gotta keep going, gotta keep going. So we're down at like 10% shields. Oh yeah, forgot about the turbo boost. Gotta use that bad boy. One more. And dust it. All right. Ace driving skills. Let's go. All right. Get your AR out and get my shoddy out just in case there's someone downstairs that wants to greet us when we get off the elevator. And they're going to get clapped. Oh, pass card, okay. So we actually, this has gotta be where their base is. 
the fusion torch. It's the last one over there. There's probably gonna be like more mines, but at least we cleared the area out, so. We saved ourselves some time. Over the moon. Alright. Show their Twitter for evidence, of course, the main the main evidence. Hey, I was watching you start your Valley stream. One of the devs came in. Project was mainly solo. There's a bit of help in you. Yeah, I was really cool to see. They pretended not to be deaf for a bit of slowly. Slowly game our hints. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, when, when devs hop in, when devs hop in on the stream, it's always a treat. Like, I spoke to a Twitch cop before. They're, they're pretty cool. Twitch cops are pretty cool. So yeah, first rule of um, classic Mass Effect, save a lot, save often. Because you have no idea what jinx shit could happen that gets you killed. So far, the, the game's been like super smooth, but uh, you know, I don't trust it. Spill that boy. Right. Dang a Twitch guy? That's cool. Yeah, yeah, literally uh uh dude from Twitch. Um There was two times. There, there was a guy from Twitch and then there was a um, like one of the, the IT Twitch cops. And uh, she was really cool, and I followed her on Twitter. Like, she's a pilot and programmer and all this shit. I'm like, damn. <laughs> like, look at that resume, you know what I mean? Like, I just played Mass Effect, man. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I really like this, uh, this muzzle effect. It's pretty cool. Looks super wispy. Down, buddy. Good boy. All right, she's not gonna have a shot if I send her there. Send the Yara over there. <laughs> you thought. All right. Sabotage. Ooh, nice shot, Ash. Nice shot. To me. Good shit. That's the last of them. Yeah, she nailed that guy. Nailed him good. Exactly the same on Skyrim. I always quick save. There's no reason not to. It's so easy that it makes it nicer, so you don't have to go all the way back to that dang witch cap. You get ambushed by a dragon. Exactly. Skyrim players know. Like, if you didn't have save anxiety before, you had it after playing Skyrim. Because literally, you could be killed by the most random shit. Um, a fucking, you know, snow beast could kill you, a giant could roll up on you and knock you a thousand feet into the air, a dragon could scorch you, you could get attacked by, like, those freaking Heartseeker bandits that are, like, super strong early game and will just murk you in no time. Like, there are so many ways to die. <laughs> That's actually some of my favorite memories of playing Skyrim, just the random deaths, like, just shit you weren't expecting. Like I go in this one cave and a freaking vampire's down there and I just get sucked.
Alright. Is that like all the torches or are we still missing them? We still need a freaking passcode. We don't if we don't have the passcode, we can't get into that building. Hold it right there. This doesn't have to end in bloodshed. Alright, let's talk, dude. Don't come any closer. We can do this the hard way, or we can end this peacefully. I didn't think you Batarians knew the meaning of the word. Look, I'm just doing my job here. Hijacking this rock wasn't my idea. I signed on to make a little profit. A quick slave grab, nothing more. This isn't just a slave grab anymore. Millions of people are going to die. Don't you think I know that? I'm just following orders here. If it were up to me, we'd have already left. Well, it's not too late. You can still leave. I don't think so. Bollock would skin me alive and sell my hide out of spite. Crazy bastard. This whole mission's gone to hell and I'm gonna pay for it. So why do you listen to him? Good question. I had a bad feeling about this from the moment we landed. Now Balak wants you dead. And what Balak wants, Balak gets. I can't change that. Do you always want to be second in command? Get me out of here and I'll take care of Balak. Then you can start giving the orders. Huh. An interesting proposal. It certainly has benefits over the current situation. Shut it down. This is Balak's problem now. I hope you're as quick with a gun as you are with your promises. For both our sakes. Balak will get what's coming to him. And so will you if I ever catch you in human territory again. Are we clear? Perfectly. Balak's holed up in the main facility. You'll need this to get in. Don't underestimate him. He's a mean bastard. Let's go. We're getting off this rock. <laughs> Poor dude just doing his job. <laughs> yeah, he's just, you know, he's just doing his job. You know, he just wanted to do a little slavery. That's it. He just wanted to do a little slavery. You know, pick up a couple of humans, sell them off. You know, you know, just, just, just a regular, regular business of the Terminus systems. You know, some, uh, some job of the hut shit. You know. Just a businessman doing business. I was dumb enough to say I could fight this giant easy then it flown me 50 feet away. Yep. <laughs> My first fight with a giant, I had already known about their power from YouTube. So like I just arrowed it to death. I just used my arrow. Same thing with my first dragon fight. I actually didn't die. Um, and my brother was like, damn, uh, I never considered just not trying to cut the dragon. And I'm like, I just, you know, I I respect my enemy, all right? I respect the dragon. I know that it is a ferocious and powerful mythical being, and I'm not gonna chance it, you know? I know my place. I'm just gonna kill it with bug bites. And uh, me and the town's guards, we got our arches out, and we just arrowed it, uh, and that was it. Of course, you know, uh, my brother wasn't satisfied with that ending. He made a build to where he could just kill a freaking legendary uh dragon in like two hits no no exaggeration like he used the wind shell twin blades and some augments and he could like burn through um the hardest enemy in the game in like two seconds and he actually glitched out the um dragonborn dlc because like you fight the first dragonborn in that dlc and um he killed himself fast at the game bug and so he actually had to kill him slower so he could progress through the game so yeah this is why you stick with it. If you really want to cut a dragon, you just got to stick with it. You can't give up. I settled. He didn't settle. He didn't settle. <laughs> yeah, man, profit. Dang, I've only beaten one other dragon so far, not counting the first one. Yeah, you, you get you get good with it. Like, um, as I got stronger, um, because the way that I built my character was for longevity. So I was a hill tank, basically. Um, and it took me forever to kill like legendary dragons but i couldn't die it, it, it was impossible for them to kill me and um, it was possible for anyone to kill me no one could kill me like once i got my hill team build together i could outlast anyone in a battle of attrition the only enemies that gave me trouble were enemies who could also heal and then that's where my uh destruction magic came in to kind of stop them from being able to do that and then i would just kill them with bug bites I'm a sword and shield guy, my bow work is useless. Yeah, um, I went sword and shield in Oblivion. So Elder Scrolls 4, that was my build. Um, Elder Scrolls 5, 
I went Battle Mage. So um, in Skyrim, I went one hand longsword and uh, my magic hand, basically, my free hand. All right, time for the big show. Sun's out, guns out. Let's go. We gonna kill us of terrorists. Shit. And these guys want to be kidding around. Alright, Ash. You got this girl. Ash. Take point. You're the tankiest one on the team. Liara, you follow up. Alright, cool. Alright, he's at, he's at range. We're gonna just get creative with him. Send it. Guns overheating. Okay. That's just a really accurate as fuck room. Oh uh, no. I had the perfect angle. And I just had to touch the thumbstick. Ruined it. Ruined it. Yeah, I might want to do another run with Elf Magic, dude, but I want to build up Shrek <laughs> right now. Yeah, I did an orc and called him Shrek. Oh, that's awesome, man. So, like, you actually played with, uh, with other races. Um, I I built, um, like, a Nord, basically. Um, and uh, I went with my second build, I think, Elf. I made like a lady, a lady elf, and um, a Nord, man, Nord. Had the full, uh, the full Viking experience. Hype for Elder Scrolls 6 though. Oh, for sure. Elder Scrolls 6, um, you know, I know that they're being very tight-lipped about it. Todd Howard is being very tight-lipped about it. Um, Starbound is something that I feel like they're putting a lot of work behind, and there is an announcement for that, so I think we're gonna get maybe some word on Elder Scrolls 6 after Starbound comes out. But, um, yeah. Like, what's the word? It's like, I forgot where... At least some people are suggesting that Elder Scrolls 6 may be set. Because the Elder Scrolls are all um, written, like it's a book of prophecy, so you can literally predict like where the next game's going to be based on the Elder Scrolls, from what I understand from the lore, but I could be wrong on that. Where the fuck he come from? Alright, dude. Well, we're gonna do we're gonna do it. Pinkiest drones in the world. Liara, get back in here. Like, she's going freaking balls to the wall. <laughs> Yeet! up on me. Like, what the fuck? Oh, shit. Oh, 
Oh, I should totally do a Dwarf Viking Man. Yes, you should. I absolutely love the Elder Scrolls lore. Just reading through all the books and games, seeing all the secrets and so forth. Oh, yeah. I made, like, a little, um, library in my, uh, in one of my houses. Not the flex, but <laughs> in one of my houses. I have, like, a little bookshelf, and I keep all of my little, uh, journals and novels. And the lore is just so deep. It's so, it's so deep and so, uh, abundant, you know? Like, I, I, I enjoy reading in that game, which I can't really say the same for most games. Alright, you win. You win aggressive. I can give you credit for that. They're not letting me be a Sigma. Probably because I'm female, that's why holding frame isn't working, but they're not they're not letting me hold frame. Yeah, no, that wasn't supposed to be There we go. Alright, one more asshole. Death before surrender! Death before surrender, yes. I would be incredibly disappointed if you surrendered. Form up way. All right, form up on me. Aid station picked up two meta gel. Everyone looks good, vitals wise. Who wants to get their brains blown out? Do I have any takers? Oh, drones! Yeah, drones aren't as... Drones aren't as sexy. I do... I do hype they add more dialogue with random NPC shopkeepers. Um, I do hope they add more dialogue with random NPC shopkeepers because it takes me out of the immersion when I hear the damn shopkeeper say, I buy one of your family members if you offer it. Just a little joke there for the one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, that, that really killed me. That really killed me. Just hearing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, now, I didn't get tired of hearing the, uh, the arrow to the knee guy. He, he never got old. Um, now, my dumb ass, when I first heard that expression, thought, oh, he got injured, and so he, uh, took a, he took a job as a guard because he got shot in the knee, and, um, you know, yeah, but no, um, it's actually a Scandinavian saying that means getting married, so, um, if you, uh, take an arrow to the knee, you're proposing to, a, uh, to someone, and you're getting married, and that's why that guard, uh, was no longer an adventurer. So, the more you know. But yeah, my dumb ass was like, Oh yeah, he, he got shot in the knee and he was wounded. Even though he doesn't have a limp. So I don't know why, you know, they didn't put a limp in the game. Maybe he got healed by magic. Yeah, I'm just going off just in ignorance. Bubbling in ignorance. Also, nice flex. I only had the white out home. White run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the white run home is still my favorite one. Like, I... I have... Let me think. If I, because I haven't played Skyrim in years, so like I'm struggling to remember like all of the properties that I have. But I had uh, two mansions, two mansions and a white run home. That's what I remember. And the uh, white run home was where I kept all my books and my journals, and my mansion was where I kept my armor. Because there's like room for armor display cases in the mansion. So I would craft armor just for drip, like not even to actually wear. And, uh, you know, it's like once you have your Daedric armor, you don't need anything else. Like glass armor and dwarven armor and all of that looks good, but Daedric is where it's at. It's even, even the dragon scale and dragon bone armor is good up to like level. 50, and then the Daedric armor is just goaded from there on out. And Orcish. Orcish is pretty good 
in the higher levels as well. You humans. You're almost more trouble than you're worth. I'm just getting started. Predictable, but this is over. I'm leaving this asteroid. If you try to stop me, I'll detonate these charges, and your helper and her friends are all going to die. You don't get to leave, Balak. Not after what you've done. What I've done? This is nothing compared to what's been done to the Batarians. We've been forced into exile, forced to survive on what we can scrounge up. It's been like that for decades. Don't make it sound like you're the innocent party here. You brought it upon yourselves. Really? You invaded our space, took our resources, and when we asked the Council for aid, they brushed us off. We were left to defend ourselves, but the humans were stronger than us. We knew that. The Council knew that. But it didn't matter. It was you. You and your kind are the only reason we're in this position. How does killing innocent people make up for that? We had no other options. Sometimes you need to get someone's attention before they'll listen. Is that what Elysium was? A way to get our attention? Well, you got it. And when we responded, you ran like cowards. Now you want to start it all over again. Enough! You couldn't possibly understand. Actually, you just don't want to understand. And I'm done wasting my breath. Now, if you want your friends to live, I suggest you step aside. You can go, but this isn't over. I'll find you eventually. Maybe, but I made sure you won't follow me today. Those charges are still on a timer. Better hurry if you want to save your friends. Negative contact, Shepard. All right, so we gotta find these charges. Oh. But we don't have time to like screw oh, around. So yeah, like you get choices like that. Like the renegade option would be just to kill him so he can't like commit another act of terror. But uh, my shepherd isn't one to just throw people's lives away <laughs> like we're, we're not we're not going with the Saren strat basically because you know that's what Saren would have done Saren would have let him die all right one bomb remaining two minutes on the clock let's move people So the next bomb's got to be one level above me. All demolition charges have been deactivated. Release the scientists from the prison cell in the lower level office. That's not your problem. You should have stayed put. <laughs> Letting him go was better than the alternative. I thought you were going to stay someplace safe. I... There might have been something I could have done to help. I thought I should be here. I know this asteroid better than anyone. You did it. Another hour in our course would have been irreversible. I ran the numbers, Shepard. X-57 would have struck near the capital city. The most densely populated region. But that's not going to happen. Thanks to you. Is Katie in here? Is she all right? Is her team? Balak was holding them hostage. I let him go to save them. Let a terrorist go or sacrifice innocent lives. I'm glad that's not a choice I had to make. Is that... Will you get in trouble for that? I mean, he could do the same thing somewhere else, couldn't he? Yeah, he could. Balak seemed like a practical man. Practical, but callous. 
I'm sure if he'd been in my place, Miss Bowman would be dead now, along with all the terrorists. But I'm not going to sacrifice people who happen to be between me and my target. So what happens now? The bad guys get away? Have you ever hunted, Simon? Actually stalked an animal in the wilderness? Can't say as I have. Hunting an animal requires patience and discipline. I'll wait for this Batarian animal to pop his head up again. And then I'll come down on him like the wrath of God. Well, I wouldn't want you after me. Shepard, thank you for my grandchildren's lives. I don't think I'll stick around, though. Not with the team gone. Too many ghosts. It's time for me to get back and spend some time with my family. Before I go, I'd like to offer you something. Maybe you'll have more use for it than I will. As lead engineer, I get some quality items. Take your pick. You've earned it. Hmm. I know it's a lot to ask, but that Omni tool of yours? I could really use something like that. Shepard, I think I mentioned that you saved my kids and grandkids. What's an Omni tool compared to that? Take it, with my blessing. I hope you get good use out of it. One more thing. You asked me to look into your missing engineers. Have you found them? Not yet. Can you think of anything that would help me find them? See if you can tap into our transmission tower out on the surface. Their equipment sheds will show up on your sensors. Take care of yourself. Be well, Shepard. We owe you. Alright, so... Let's see, we got that. LMAO class of mine, the more you know, I used to be a dumbass like you, then I searched up the meaning. Yep, exactly. Drip, fair enough. Yes, glass armor is drippy. I've got an orcish mace if that's any good. It is good, it is good. An orcish bow. My armor is still. Alright, gotta go and concentrate on penalties. Alright, my men. No problem. There's a lot of moving parts, so. <laughs> this is this is the this is the World Cup. The event. Somni tool and good light armor too. All right. So we're almost done with just being in this area. I can still find the engineers though. I can't believe you let Ballot go to save us. I half expected you to just let us die, sacrifice the few for the many. Then I'd be no better than the Batarians. Besides, Balak won't get away with this. I know who he is now. He can't run forever. <laughs> you sound like my brother. He was always so stubborn, but always willing to do the right thing, no matter what. Your brother was the one Balak killed? Yes. Aaron, he was the one who convinced me to join the team here. Said it would be an adventure. I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but I should see to Aaron. I understand. You've been through enough today. I'll get out of your way. Thank you. Oh, I don't even know your name. Commander Shepard, with Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. Thank you, Commander Shepard. Not exactly what I expected, but thank you. I'll get out of your way. So long, Kate. I appreciate that, Commander. Goodbye. All right. So clean that up. Thank you so much. I thought we were all dead. Then there's her brother, shot in the head by the Batarian.
Yeah, this room just seemed a lot larger when you're like dodging bullets where it's that large at all. When we came up, there was a giant tree over us. This came into the So we got a pretty sweet Omni tool. And it's um honestly blind luck. Like I didn't I didn't think about this mission because I've never done it. It was one of the DLC missions and I didn't buy any of the DLC for the game. And um You know, him being an engineer and having that Omni tool, it's like the best for the engineer class. So I chose engineer, um just, you know, to like challenge myself, but I benefited a lot from that. Of course, there's also the, the Sentinel that uh, benefits from that as well. And the uh, Infiltrator. Because in Mass Effect, you have three classes. Engineer, Soldier, and Adam. And then you have hybrid classes, which are just amalgamations of those three classes. So, my favorite class, the Infiltrator, is a Tech Soldier hybrid. Um, so, Engineer isn't too foreign to me because, you know, I'm familiar with a lot of those tech skills. Um, and then the Vanguard is the Soldier Biotic Hybrid, which was kind of okay um, in this game, and that's what a uh, Caden is. Caden is um, a Vanguard, but he doesn't have any of the tankiness um, that comes with it. Which is kind of like what makes him um, an unfortunate, an unfortunate character. It's like once you get Liara, there's no reason to have Caden on your team. And Tali and Garrus can do the tech part of it. Because Tali is a, a full on engineer, so. And Garrus is a uh, infiltrator. But there's like no reason to really do it. And Rex is a van. Uh, Rex is a. Sentinel. Soldier Biotic Hybrid. No, that's actually Vanguard. Yeah, Rex is the Vanguard. Same thing with uh, Caden, but no, Caden is Tech and Biotic. Caden is the Sentinel. Alright. Main facility. Survey station. So now the survey station's opened up. You just need to find the uh, engine engineers. So we'll go to the closest one and then just work our way out. Seeing dead engineers, that's not good. Badly beaten before being killed with a pistol shot to the back of the head at close range. That's great. Bad way to go. Central transmission towers on the fritz again. No one ever listens to my warnings about single points of failure. I'm surprised when our surface comms work half as well as they do. When Slash slow shows up to relieve me, I'll go see if I can get the old girl back up and running. Then he was attacked by Darian's technician kit. So, a little Omni tool, Nexus 3. It's probably gonna be Omni Jail bait, if anything. Not that big of a deal. Alright, cleared that out.
Yeah, we don't have the momentum. Alright, what the hell was this place? Definitely seen it, that's for sure. This computer is filled with operation locks and personnel journals for a small pirate music station operated by expert Evans engineers. It includes scripts for several promotional messages, none of which appear to have been recorded. Radio X57, rocking this rock since 2182. When your world seems hollow, we'll help you touch the sky. Talk hard, your last best hope for rock within 300,000 kilometers. <laughs> So yeah, um, elevator music, elevator music, man. This might be an Omni Jet one, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, we're gonna have to spend some Omni Jet on that one. No shot, no shot. Ah, fuck. Severe burns and show signs of major concussive trauma. Mercifully, the explosion would have killed her instantaneously. Yeah. This is Dr. Hines. They found me, damn Batarians. I can hear them out there prowling around, trying to find a way in. It sounds like they're attaching something to the door. If I don't make it, tell my family I love them. Yeah, so she was killed by the breaching charge. Lisa was equipped though. Yeah, that's the door. So, so far, uh, we have found no engineers alive, which is bad. Now we gotta go on the other side of the map.
Viva Italia, it's coming Rome, it's coming Rome, it's coming Rome. I, I do feel kind of bad for my British friends, but they had it coming to them. They're setting themselves up for defeat. I'm an optimist, but also a realist. So I knew Spain are probably not going to win. Ah, I got you. Yeah, I saw some people um, um, saying that, like, <laughs> it's coming Rome, it's coming Rome. So um, is Italy in the lead, or did they just win? It's like, I'm not watching it live. I'm, like, looking at a broadcast. Fuck, I gotta invest in decryption. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm also rooting for, uh, for, uh, Italy. Communications are down and there are non-corporate dropships landing near the main facility. Here flashes of light over the horizon. I can't be certain, but I guess it's heavy arms fire. As per emergency protocol, I'm arming the defense drones. I'm not waiting for my pickup going to Oh, fuck me. Hyping themselves up saying it's coming home, football's coming home, we haven't won in 50 years, etc. Italy won. Penalties won. Wow, penalties. Damn. I feel bad for Rashford in particular. He did a terrible penalty penalty, so you already know the England fans are gonna blame it on him. Poor boy's crying. Yeah, he's done. They are gonna they're gonna ream him. Like, you look at the the papers tomorrow, like the sun, it's gonna be it's gonna be rough. He's gonna have to go into exile for a couple of weeks. Even though, like, it should never come down to one player in the team sport. Um, you know, plenty of blame to go around, but like you said, they're going to pin it on him and say, ah, oh, well, you fucked up, you know. But no, you're right, though. You're right. I mean, from what you're saying, like, Italy was just a better team. It's like, yeah, England, you made it far, but you're not going to beat Italy. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to do that. Which doesn't bode well for Formula One. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping Hamilton um, gets it together, but I think Red Bull. This might be Red Bull's year. Heading out. Looks like he died from a single shot through the helmet, likely from a sniper. Whoever killed him didn't even bother to search his body. There's so, still some equipment in the service pack. Alright. He was carrying a biotic amp. He will not be needing that anymore. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. Like, you're gonna go on foot and try to investigate what's happening? Like, you armed... I didn't mean to hit his body. Okay. I don't hate him. I'm just saying, like, you arm drones at your base. And you didn't send the drones out to scout ahead to see what's happening. That could have saved you. Could have saved your life, you know? Because it doesn't look like the Batarians even went to that base. So if he had stayed at the base, he'd still be alive right now. Should be able to wrap up this quest now. Hope that quartermaster has some grenades because it's really fire thing. Say, Shepard, you didn't happen to find any of my engineers, did you? Yes, all of them. Their bodies, anyway. Oh, I, I see. Well then, I guess it's better than not knowing. Take care of yourself. Be well, Shepard. 
we owe you. Dodge. It's bittersweet, because, you know, like, we saved a colony, but... It feels like a, a Pyrrhic victory, you know? But, it's a mess. Shit happens. But, alright, um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stream. It was dope. Fun, um, streaming for you guys, as always. Thank you for coming by. Uh, Lindsay Dream Hunter, thank you for the subs. Um, it was good to see you. You know, Edgy, TSM, all you guys. Um, next weekend, you already know what it is. It's gonna be more of the same. All other things being equal, um, if I do stream other than Saturday and Sunday, it will be a game that is not Mass Effect. So if you're following along with Mass Effect, don't worry about missing anything. I'm gonna stream Mass Effect on the weekends. Um, there are some other streams I want to do because I did just upgrade my GPU, so um, I want to try streaming some more uh, demanding games and um, just seeing how that pans out. So if you see me streaming on a random day, that's what's happening. Uh, but anyway, take care, everybody. Have a good weekend. Um, and uh, congratulations, Italy, on a win. I know you guys are livid. You guys are partying down. Um, save some gelato for me. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, take it easy everyone, bye bye.